Hey guys, it's Clifton Savage, your good and faithful business coach. On today's Small Business Spotlight, I have the great pleasure to introduce you to Erin Isaacson of Pacific Crest Digital Solutions. Now, her company is all about capturing the secret sauce of your business, the culture, the standard of how you want things done your way, so you can effectively communicate that to your current team, to bringing on more people if you have to replace someone or you're growing, whatever that is. She specializes in the trades industry, manufacturing, even medical. She's done it all over the past couple of decades. And one of the best things she does that I love is standard operating procedures, um, a lot of other training documentation. It all comes down to communication, right? You build your business, you have your secret sauce, you're doing things the way you want to. That's why you're in business for yourself. You know, the, the types of clients you want to work with, the type of work that you do, the impression you want to have on your community. That's important to hold on to, build that value into your business to sustain it for, for years and years to come. Well, you can't do that if you don't have the standards clearly communicated, the processes, the procedures, even policies in place. That's where Aaron comes in. So sit back, take some notes and enjoy the ride. So Aaron, tell us a little bit more about you and your business. Absolutely. Um, so um, as Clifton said, my name is Erin. Um, I am a technical writer. I specialize in helping companies develop their policies, procedures, standard operating procedures or SOPs, mm -hmm. um, and mostly used for training and operational purposes. I come from a background of operations and project management, so I understand how important these items are. Mm -hmm. I have seen companies succeed and I have seen a lot of them fail and I have been taking notes and, you know, now I kind of help, I've made my business to help businesses develop the tools that they need so that they can, you know, ultimately succeed. I'm a fix it, fix it person by nature. So it's, <laughs> it's all in line with that. Um, and a really, I enjoy taking, you know, technical and complicated processes and making them comprehensible for employees, readers, and, you know, whoever you need. What are particular businesses or companies or people that you're looking to help with right now and this year into the future? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, as SOPs come, they they go along a, a lot of different industries. Any business, yeah. any oh, yeah. in development should have these. Yeah. Um, but my main focus, um, I keep kind of in line with my background, which is uh, mostly, you know, training construction. Um, I do have experience in medical and I've helped a lot of medical oh, companies, yeah. in particular on the um, policy and procedure side uh, with medical. Um, and then I've actually found um, a lot of IT companies need a lot of assistance with this. So I've kind of been branching in that direction as well. Right. And, um, and then obviously manufacturing, you know, I feel that manufacturing and construction seem to go hand in hand mm -hmm. that yeah. if you're handling one, you tend to oh, be yeah. helping the other because they, they all are intertwined somewhere. It's all an assembly line, essentially. <laughs> yeah. So that, those are kind of the, the main companies that I've been focusing with, uh, just with my background and uh, who I know and who I'm able to help. So yeah, that, that's where I kind of focus right now. Great. Aaron, what are some of the things that you see, whether clients you've worked with recently or in the past, what are some of the common mistakes that you're seeing or, you know, common, you know, ways that they're thinking, viewing this type of work that's really just digging a deeper hole for them? Like, what is that mistake they're making? Uh, you know, I think honestly, it's just not valuing the SOPs that they should, you know, I, I think that especially when it comes to someone who's been running a company and they get so involved with the day-to-day -day standards mm. that they get or in operations that they just yeah. get so wrapped up in it that they forget that if they have it written down, they can begin passing things off, you know, yeah. um, I know that, you know, with the client that we worked with together with uh, trying to develop their training manuals and stuff, they went years without stuff like that. I think that I think it's just undervaluing how much value having just documentation and spending the time in developing that can save you in the long run. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. I completely agree because you're right. And especially in today's changing times, not that we're trying to use it as a scare tactic, but it's just the reality that we're facing, whether it's the great resignation, you know, another potential economic collapse or just the changing landscape of generational shifts. And, you know, like with some clients that I've had, they, they grew way too big for themselves. And when the housing bubble burst, it destroyed them. And most of them did not survive that. The lucky few that did. Absolutely. And I, I think that it's just so, 
you know, between, you know, you have these companies that struggle with the rapid growth that just happens so fast that they're just yep. constantly trying to catch up. And, yep. you know, and then there's also just the aspect of you don't know what life's going to throw you. I mean, I have a client right now that they're struggling because they had 60 employees in Ukraine. It's unfortunate. I wish that, you know, when something you know, sad and drastic and terrible happens that the world stops, but it doesn't, it keeps going. There's still bills that need to be paid. There's still employees that you have to take care of and having something written down that you can just reference helps the process <laughs> and the flow so much when, when life happens, you know, yeah. it's hard enough just to think on your own in that moment, yeah. let alone making decisions that are affecting, you know, dozens or hundreds of lives, you know, whether it's in your own company or the the families that you take care of from those employees. So that's massive. Yeah. If you could, Aaron, share with me some positive takeaways that people can take from obviously kind of getting more insight about SOPs and the value behind them. And obviously we'll direct them towards you and, and other resources to learn more. But do you have some quick beneficial takeaway that you can give us? Yeah, absolutely. I think that, you know, one of the biggest things that business owners need to realize when it comes to developing their SOPs is that they need to start realizing what their big goals are. You know, when you come, when you are an actual, you know, when you develop a business, it's, it's not with the goal of just running this business for the rest of your life. You know, it, it is to, you know, develop a business that can operate without you so that you can take the time to focus on, you know, growing your investments and, you know, maybe looking into investing in something else, you know, yep. as, a, as an entrepreneur, you're constantly looking for the next big thing. Yes. And when you develop a company, which of course is going to take time and it does take passion and, but you want to make sure that you set it up right. So when you put in your SOPs and you actually create essentially an instruction manual of how to run your business, mm -hmm. then you're allowing yourself the opportunity to develop and train a team so that you can actually start focusing on what your big picture goals are, you know, and then that's kind of where I come in is I just come help develop the tools that you need so that you can focus on something else now. As, as business owners or people involved in businesses, you know, we're we're, we're blessed with those opportunities that, you know, we, we have a good problem. Like you were saying, if yeah. you're really good at what you do, which is usually they're really good at a trade or a skill and, you know, word of mouth is good and marketing is good, then you're going to have a problem of too much work that you don't know how to yeah. scale properly or contain, uh, you know, and grow uh, and keep retain that same quality and that same, you know, feel that you want from your company. That's why a lot of people start their own business because they didn't like how it was done somewhere else. Exactly. But they still fall in the same hole that everyone else does because they don't standardize it. They don't like template yep. it is this is our standard. This is our culture. And um, and this is how we can communicate it. And and so when the opportunities come up that we do grow and can bring more people in, they're brought in on the same, you know, values and, and insight as everybody else in the company. And so many people miss it. And that's why it's just a constant running around and trying to fix everything. So it's just uh, more work than it needs to be. Absolutely. And I, I think another piece that a lot of business owners don't realize is that when you do have the standard, their standardized operations right there, it actually mm -hmm. adds value to your company too, mm -hmm. which yep, again, yep. from a big picture standpoint, if you're looking to eventually sell that company, you need those, that that is what Absolutely. the buyers are going to be looking for. They don't want to come in and have to reinvent the wheel. They want to come in and improve the wheel that's already been working. No, that's a, that's a great point too. And I mean, the we can see that stuff all the time where people are, yeah. you know, getting bought out or uh, companies are merging or something like that. But it, a lot of times those mergers do not go well when there's yeah. not a clear standard in place for that other company. And they pretty much just get wiped out and including the, the staffing, because if they don't mesh well with the other company, they may be gone altogether. And that's right. uh, it's just setting up a lot of people for failure, unfortunately. Aaron, what are some ways that people can get a hold of you, uh, learn more about you, get in touch with you? What's what's the best way to do that? Absolutely. Um, so they are, uh, you can always check out my website, which is pacificcrestdigital.com. Um, all of my contact information is there, um, the services we provide, a little bit about me. Um, and then if you do want to email me directly, um, you can email us at hello at pacificcrestdigital.com. Awesome. Wonderful. Well, Aaron, thank you so much for taking the time to do this quick little spotlight and introduce you to everybody and uh, look forward to having um, longer future talks with you. So thank yeah. you very much.